It was mid-June and the anticipation was building. Not only for the start of construction of our new home, but for the first berry harvest of the year as well. After all, it's called Westbury Acres for a reason. So, when I was learning about this, said picking mulberries is a either a tedious task or an enjoyable task for the patient. You can see why. Look at how little they are. But it wasn't the mulberries we were really after. It's the black raspberries, which are also called black caps. Because of the cold spring this year, all the crops in general are behind. So we didn't anticipate to find any berries this soon, when suddenly the prize appeared. Yeah, those are black caps. So look how far ahead they are compared to the, dang it, there's some all the way down in there. These are way farther ahead than the black berries. Yeah, those are almost going to be... Yeah, we'll have to watch those really closely. But you see there's a patch all the way down in there. There's a mulberry tree over there. Do you remember, Rye, that this is the bush that we very first found berries on last year when we came down here? And we saw the berries down in this camp area, and I was like, what the heck is that? And then we went for that drive around the property and we started seeing red everywhere. This is where it all started. <laughs> that bush right there. Oh my gosh, Ryan. Yeah, those look pretty close to ready. Much to our surprise once again, the red and not yet ripe berries in one area of the property turned into a deep purple and ripe berry in another. Black cap of 2022. Now that we found some, the hunt was on for even more. I don't really see any over here. Oh, they're right here. This, and they go back. I just, these aren't quite as red. So I learned something then that black raspberries seem to be a little bit more cold, cold weather. Seems like it. Seems like they don't really like a lot of sun. In order to access some of the berries that we're ready to pick, we had to bring in the reinforcements. All right, so you just want me to come straight in like this? Yeah, and... even if you start back at that like real green yeah. weed and kind of come straight like two feet in. Okay. Well, I was just wondering if I was going to go Oh, back you're coming and forth. in this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that you're right. Way... No, you're right. That's better. Okay. The drop off, Ryan, is here where my foot is. Okay. It out. It drops once and then it drops again. Okay. So I should be able, like this bend, like it tilts. Okay. So when I go down in, it should be able to go with the contour of the ground, and then I should be able to back out. Okay. And these, there are berries like right here, so you really just want to stay. Just, you be on the edge if you can and tell me. Okay. Where. There, like all of that. So what we're trying to get to those berries right in there and it might seem like you can reach across and just grab into there but as soon as you get hit with these thorns they are nasty so very we're trying nasty. to get those opened up so kelsey can get in there and pick when they get right So I know we've shown you the locust before and we've talked about that before, but it's absolutely 
pertinent that you're careful where you walk and you're really watching for things because even just in that brush pile when I go in and I'm pulling things out you take a step <laughs> this is potentially what meets you I mean that is a finger length thorn and it's decently sharp um, you can go right through your shoe that would not feel very good <laughs> so you have to always be watching we move to another patch to clear out more brush for easy picking Yeah, if there's one swipe you could do right there, then I can come around that side. Okay. some of this terrain other than yeah, the way that thing can go over stuff. Those ready, ready, or they're just... They're close enough where, because we have plans this weekend, if I don't pick them today, they probably will be just they could be fallen. Growing up in Minnesota, lakes are what we talk about the most. It's the land of 10,000 lakes, of course. But once I moved to Iowa, things changed. And that larger body of water that's still unless the wind is making its way became a muddy and flowing summertime haven for kayaks and suntans. We simply call it floating. But the last few years of drought in our area has meant some of the waterways weren't able to be floated at all and summer felt a little less fun without this local favorite. Yep, and then that uh, one right there. Yep, those are both the good ones. So this is apparently what it takes to just go off down the river. It's always a production. Being self-employed usually means we don't know when to stop working, but it also has its perks when you can take an afternoon to enjoy a favorite summertime activity. We've had sufficient rain this year, so the river was pretty high and flowing well. And who needs a motor when you can just let the water do the work? The river is filled with the scenery that we love and the occasional visitor to the kayak. Usually there's plenty of sandbars to stop and take a break every once in a while, but because the water has been so high, the only sandbar that we found looked more like the surface of a different planet. Land ho! Back on the river, we found a bald eagle watching over his kingdom, and that's always a special sight to see. A few days later, we took our kayaks to an area of the river near Kelsey's hometown to float with some of her family. Oh, you're fine. He's just going to here. Eric is just supposed to say hello. Hi! <laughs> Anytime someone says Iowa is flat and has nothing but corn, just remember these images. No, I'm not jumping. <laughs> 
That's another memorable trip down the river. Back at Westbury, Kelsey was doing some evening berry picking. Purple hands and all. Definitely have a lot of cleanup to do by hand to really make this process easier as the years go on, you know? Like, it's very, very slow because so many things I could reach in and get and I'm like tangled up in a web of thorns. They hurt. <laughs> They're so good. Your fingers are really clean. That's true. What would you do with these fresh treasures you might ask? How about a fresh black raspberry pie? Sugar, tapioca, and homemade pie crust. This is my grandma's recipe, which was passed down to my mom, who is here helping on this day and has already passed it on to Kelsey. So Rye, this is your grandmother's. The last one. The she last said, right? pie plate. Right. And that's how you turn something fresh off the vine just a few hours ago into a work of art that tastes great too. That's really good. <laughs> 